Hey, what's up world? Lake Wiley, beautiful Lake Wiley. Beautiful sunrise. God only gives you so many sunrises in life. No better way to spend a sunrise than fishing. Hey folks, what's up? It's early. Class is starting early today. I just got out here, got anchored up, and uh, looked at my sonar, and there's a, what looks like a gazillion perch. I have not dropped the rod down yet. I'm gonna drop it down. I'm pretty sure it spurts. I'll show you what they look like on the sonar. That right there should be perch, folks. That's what all that spaghetti looking stuff is right there. That should be perch. 18 feet of water, 88 degrees. Pretty sure that's perch. I hadn't put a rod in yet. Uh, sorry class started so early today, folks. I know you're not wanting to go to class at 6.55, but it's starting early. I'm pretty sure those are perch. So uh, I'm gonna get my camera holder here set up. Bear with me. Got a bunch of people jumping on. Some of y'all getting up early today. All right, hang on just a second. Bear with me here. I'm going to figure out a way to put this rod here. And we're going to see if these are perch. Pretty sure they are. Eh. I'm not digging that set up. That's looking like it's going to fall in the lake. So we're going to see what we can do to keep the sun from behind us here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Welcome, folks. If you just joined in, sorry about the silhouette. The sun's in a bad place. I can't really hold my phone. I uh, got what looks like a ton of perch on sonar. I just got set up here. I'm gonna drop this down. Double hook rig, little pieces of meat on it. Little sinker on the bottom, that's what you got. The screen is covered in fish. Let's just see what we got here. Pretty sure it's perch. If so, I'm gonna be loading the tank with them. So, I just hit it on the bottom. Boom, there's one, All right, yep. That feels like perch bite. So we got. Boom, there we go. First one. I will probably be able to put a hundred of them in the boat as long as they stay schooled up right here. What I've got are little pieces of cut bait on here. You can use worms, you can use minnows. Uh, this stuff usually stays on the best. This is just some brim that I have. I already had some brim in the cutting board here that I was using for catfish bait. So I'll show you how this is gonna work. Got a little bit of a tangle here. Nothing like live TV tangles. The good thing about this is I should be able to put some fish in the boat, show you what these suckers look like. That screenshot that you saw there is what they look like on sonar. I'll show you another picture here in a minute. The only thing with dealing with light braid is it tangles. It is like dealing with sewing thread. Not good. There we go. Cool. Another piece of bait on here. These are perch, white perch. They're a cousin to the... They're a cousin to the striped bass, actually. They're not really a true perch. Just like a largemouth bass is not really a bass, it's a sunfish. These are a cousin to the striper. Same life habits, life cycle as a striper. Uh, they live in salt water, migrate into fresh water to spawn, and uh, they can, just like a striper, can live their entire life in uh, fresh water. So, uh, same kind of deal with river runs and everything else to spawn trick is just getting them fired up and biting. Like I said, they're schooled good. Let's see what that looks like. Usually once you get one bit, one bite, one hook, there we go. Once you get them biting, it'll kind of go crazy. Ideally you do this with a couple of rods and a couple of people. That way you get the action going and once it starts going, it's on fire, and I'm starting to see some up on top here. Uh, what they're doing is feeding on the little bitty fry that are hatched this year. A lot of them's up here on these points. That's where we're at. We're up on an underwater point. That's where I decided to anchor up. I'm on Lake Wiley. This is great. I can actually see the questions today. Uh, it's not that bright. I am on Lake Wiley. Uh, I am on the lower end of the lake. Sob, as we call it, S-O-B-B, -B, south of Buster Boyd. 
and uh, anchored up on a uh, point here. Uh, it looks like some of them are moving off the screen. They're not as thick as they were. I'll show you what they look like while they're here. I do not have to work that rod. It will take care of itself. That's what they're looking like on the sonar. That's what it looks like. You can see it's a good scattering of fish. If you look at it here on the structure, get an even better view. If I do the actually, the down scan shows them real good. That's what they really look like. Good scattering of fish in there. Now, there they are, stacking up good. Now what will happen is a lot of times these fish are inactive, not feeding, which appears that's what these are doing because they're not going crazy biting. Um, so sometimes you got to work the rod a little bit, do a little bit of jigging to get them to bite. I'm going to try rearranging the camera here. Kind of going to be looking at my dress. There we go. I'm going to play with them a little bit, make sure I got bait on. How do you know it was perched? Honestly, part of it. It's just experience of knowing what they look like. They look similar to stripers. If you guys do any striper fishing and fish any kind of lakes that have schooling striper, it's a similar signature. It gets kind of that spaghetti erratic looking pattern on there. Uh, was these fish are moving. That's why you get the lines and stuff going through there. Unlike shad that are sitting a little more still, not moving around as much. So. Uh, but yeah, the reason I know they're perch is just because I've seen them enough and it's just becoming familiar with what that signature looks like. Yeah, they're not, it's a, for there to be as many of them, they're not biting as good as I thought they would be. I thought this would be on fire. That's the way this is a lot of times, you just got to get them fired up by jigging them. And that's what I'm trying to show you is what I'm doing with the rod. Make sure they haven't picked the bait off of here yet. That's still there. I'll be honest with you, they may. Water temperature, it's 87.8 here, 87.8, pretty warm. Pretty warm, about what you expect this late in the summertime. Now I'm curious if they don't like this bait. This is brim that I got on here. Um, a lot of times what I do is cut a piece of white perch off and use that. and. Uh, that seems to work good, and I may, I got one sitting on top of the water. I may cut a little sliver off of him. We'll see if that makes a difference. They eat their own. Would you say perch, brim, are better uh, than herring? Depends where you're fishing at, honestly. Uh, it depends where you're fishing. Hold that thought. I'm going to cut a piece of this perch. I'll show you what I'm doing here. I got one floating there on top of the water. Pin the knife. Try to show you this. I think I can. Where do you go? Come here, sucker. A tank full of bait, and I'm trying to find one perch. Lovely. Boring TV. Boring TV. Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, when all else fails, use the dadgum net. Hold up there. Where's he at? Looking for that one perch. I think see a perch. Alright, there we go. What I'll do here, move that net out of the way. Try to give you a little play here. I'm gonna cut a lay off of that fish. And then this back end thin little meat right here. I'm just gonna cut off a little bitty chunk that I'll put on the hook. It's something literally that small. Bear with me, I'm going to change out the bait. Because they're hitting this bait, like I said, these are little pieces of brim. For some reason they're not really going nuts on it. And there's still way too many of them on the screen for them not to be frenzied up really good. These things also hit minnows, and this time of the year, it'll also hit red worms. Somebody was asking about the brim, herring, or perch. I think it depends on the lake, and 
obviously this spot I pulled into has perch stacked up on it. So I would think that perch is going to be a better bait here. There are places, and when you're saying heron, I assume you're talking about blueback heron or you're talking like river herring. Uh, I think it's just going to depend on where you're at, what the fish are feeding on, what they're keying on. Fresh is always better than old, that's for sure. Fresh is always better than frozen. Not as good a bite as I thought. I thought they'd be tearing it up. It's like picked off one or two and then poof. At least you got a couple of them on camera to see. And this may be a thing where they're just not feeding, they're scold and just not feeding heavy. So I'm gonna get back up here. Stand by. I feel like that's a very odd looking picture. <coughs> that's my camera grip. There we go. But yeah, hopefully you learned a little something in that. Yeah, so odd bite. Usually these things, when you get them stacked up like that, uh, they blow up. If you're wondering what that is, good stuff. Eh, it, it helps. Uh, like I said, I wish they were biting better. There's a lot of them here. Their chest not blowing up like they normally do. I'm going to give it another minute. Throw in any more questions you got, man. I, the questions are great because people learn from the questions. There's a lot of stuff here that I just forget to tell you because... Uh, it's not that I'm keeping any secrets. It's just that it's stuff I don't, you know, I just, well, it's like, how do I know they're perch? Let me walk that water off the camera. Uh, would you say perch? Remember better here? It's like, uh, the thing about how did I know they were perch? Well, I didn't really get, think to tell you, but that's just kind of one of them things you know from seeing them enough. And, uh, then you drop the baits down and catch the hound out of them. Uh, which normally you would right here. You should be catching them one right after another. I'll show you the rig again in case any of y'all came in late. Just a little double hook rig. Got two hooks. Little bitty circle hook on it. And then just a little bank sinker on the other end. These are great bait. When you get on the big ones, they're, they're great to eat. Um, we've got... These here, what I've caught so far, are small, good bait size fish. There are some pound and a half white perch in here, some really big ones. And uh, yeah, you get several of those. They're big enough to fillet and, and eat. And I'm trying to get them aggravated. I can feel them hit. It's like they hit it and move off of it, which is not perch like. It could be. They don't want this thing moving. And that will happen. Most of the time, you aggravate the crap out of them and they'll bite. Try something different. Try something different. I know they're all on this edge. I cast that away from the boat. I'm going to bump it back to the boat very slow. Just see if I pick up any that way. I am seeing them on top of the water. You'll see these things come up on top of the water, similar to stripers. Uh, coming up schooling. Sometimes there's just individuals in here feeding. But there's one. There's one. See, I'm not lying to you. They are there. I hadn't doubled on one yet, so it's not totally on fire with the bite. I'm hoping if I can get one or two in the boat. Pardon me when I throw this in the line. That's what they look like again. Look almost like a baby striper, honestly. People confuse them, especially the bigger ones. People confuse the bigger ones with white bass. Uh, and they look remarkably similar to a white bass, uh, especially the big, one, the big ones. When they start getting in that one pound range, they look similar to a white bass. Uh, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine caught the state record out of this lake. And... Uh, the, e, the DNR was not convinced that it was uh, a white perch. And at first they said that they thought it was a white bass, then they thought it was a hybrid. And they actually, and this is no lie, did DNA testing on it. 
uh, they had to get a pure white perch and a pure white bass, extract the DNA, and make sure that it wasn't a cross somehow. I swear, they, they spent the money to do that. Uh, and it was confirmed it was a pure white perch, right at two pounds, I think it was one pound 15 ounces, something like that. And uh, to this day, I believe it's still the, if I get him or not, I think I dropped him. It's still the uh, state record. Sorry to wake you guys up so early. Uh, I'm out fishing, trying to beat the crowds. Uh, Saturday, this is a crowded lake. It is, for those of you who are not familiar, it's Lake Wiley. It's right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it's on the North Carolina, South Carolina line. Uh, pretty big lake, 13,000 acres, uh, fed by two rivers on the Catawba River system. Um, and being this close to Charlotte, it gets crowded, uh, especially on the weekend. The uh, only thing we got going for us today is that it's hot. And actually, believe it or not, uh, a lot of people just stay the heck home. I, this is a weird bite. I am getting hit like crazy. And are just not mauling the bait and taking it. Normally with this many fish stacked up, you would catch them one right after another, two at a time. Boom, got those. Might be a better one. Yeah, a little bit bigger. This is a uh, similar technique to what the bass guys do. Uh, drop shotting straight down underneath the boat. There you are. Nothing super big. That's great. I dropped it in my net. Pardon me while I... This is a very uh, electronics oriented fishing. It can be or it cannot be. To be honest, uh, probably the majority of these fish I catch I catch them when I'm drifting or trolling for catfish. I will put one of these rigs out, uh, maybe a couple of them, put some bait on them, and as I'm floating along drifting, I will pick these things off. And uh, you know, you'll drift through a school of them. If you can stop the boat, you can stop the boat, and you can catch them one right after another. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, people ask about this all the time. How it works, how you catch them. Uh, as the saying goes, they're easy to catch. They're just hard to find. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's usually the truth. Uh, as far as finding them, where to start, underwater points like this are great. Um, anytime you have a place with deep water nearby, they seem to like the 12 to 22 foot range for some reason. Uh, question from Skip, am I only doing perch? Well, I've got six rods out for catfish. I'm anchored up and uh, Perch are the only fish I'm catching right now. I'm not catching a ton of them. Uh, trying to catch some. But yeah, I'm actually fishing for catfish, anchored up, and I noticed some perch on the sonar. And I uh, was gonna do a little tutorial here on catching them because this is a perfect situation for catching them. Let me see what, i just let that sit there. Yep, there are not as many now. As you can see, not as many on the screen as there were. Um, and I may have parked now on top of a school or something and had a bunch of them. That looks like some with something else. Uh, that's kind of perchy looking. The uh, screenshot there on the video is a good example of what it looks like though. But yeah, I got the catfish rods out. Got six of those out. Spanned around the boat. And, uh, and I'm just doing this on the side. Got a few in the tank. A couple of brim, a dead brim from the other day. I hadn't been fishing in about two weeks, and uh, let me put this back in the holder, bear with me. There we go. Um, so I came out yesterday and had to catch some brim to use for bait. Did some fishing for catfish yesterday on the other end of the lake. Fishing was not good. Uh, I think 12 pounds was the biggest fish, and I think I only caught like five fish. It was not good fishing. So uh, decided to come down here. This in the lake has a thermocline in place. Uh, and I'm shooting some pictures of it, some video of it. Uh, try to put together a video, an edited video to go over that stuff a little bit. So my plan here is to was to come up on one of these points, get above the therm thermocline. Thermocline is set in at around 25 feet. And I'll have some videos out that will show what that looks like on the sonar. Uh, and uh, 
So yeah, I'm gonna anchor up here. Uh, I'll give this half hour, 45 minutes. This is one of those situations, fishing for catfish on these points and humps like this. You can sit here all day and hope one bites, uh, and you may get one, but I just know from experience that if I don't get on a fish in 45 minutes here, I just need to get a drifting because I think fish are scattered right now. It's post spawn. Uh, our spawn's pretty much over with. There may be a straggler here and there, uh, but it's post spawn. And uh, fish are scattered. They're out feeding. They're on mussel beds, hitting shad, whatever. And uh, it's just not, I don't think it's very productive. I mean, you can, I think that now if I was fishing at night, um, probably be anchored up trying to catch a flathead around some structure. But covering water seems to be a very productive way to catch fish right now. Um, and honestly, believe it or not, smaller baits are working really, really well. Uh, for whatever reason, I put out a mix of big baits and small baits. I think it may be because of what a lot of these fish are keying on is mussels. Don't know why they do that, but it seems like after the spawn, a lot of the catfish feed on mussels. I don't know how that is in other parts of the country, but I know these eastern reservoirs have the uh, a lot of the uh, Asiatic clams in them, and uh, those are little mussels that have the little ridges on them, and uh, we have gazillions of those, and uh, those fish seem to key and feed on those for some reason. So, uh, so yeah, smaller baits seem to work better. You still catch them on big baits. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind when I say something's working, that just doesn't mean that something else is totally not working. Uh, like I say, oh, I'm catching more fish on cut bait. You'll still catch them on live bait. Uh, the majority of the fish that big blues and flatheads eat are alive, plain and simple. Uh, it's just a lot of times cut bait will bring them in better. Uh, with scent than anything else. It looks like my purse bite is like gone. I'm gonna try the other side of the boat just to see. Yeah, I see some schooling over there. Chunk them out. Now you can do the casting thing. Go back to the perch for a second. You can cast on these fish. Yeah, boom, there they go. You got them right there. I seen some pop on top of the water on the other side. You can cast at these things with little uh, rooster tails, things like that, and catch them. Uh, oh, doubled up, deuces. It's so what we call deuces, baby. Deuces. Mama perch, baby perch. Deuces. But yeah, you can cast at these things. Uh, you can take a jigging spoon on these bigger fish and jig right over the top of them. There's one there, what they look like. Like I said, you can see the lines look very similar to a white bass. Even got some striper coloration to them. Uh, so yeah, what I'm doing here, instead of dropping it straight underneath the boat, I seen some fish over here away from the boat, pop it on top of the water, just uh, and just dropped it and threw it over there, and I'm just bumping it on the bottom next to them. Uh, these things will school up like perch. Uh, I've had a lot of people, especially on Lake Watery, which is a striper lake, uh, will you know, I've got messages from people I know that live down there like, man, stripers are blowing up out here on the point. Every evening, stripers. And then you go out there and get out there and it looks like stripers, but it's actually big one pound white perch. They're coming up on top just like stripers do. And yeah, you can get some little artificials and cast in there and just slay them. Uh, like I was saying earlier, they'll hit minnows. Uh, minnows is, if I have to find perch, I'll go out with minnows. And uh, that's the easiest way they'll hit those before they'll hit anything. Uh, obviously the problem with minnows and a school of feeding fish is it's a pain in the butt to put minnows on. So that's why I prefer when they're hitting cut bait like they are today is to catch them this way. Uh, this, if you use that white meat, uh, it stays on real well and you can catch them one after another. So. Yeah, if you have any questions, oh, okay, what a good, I love a question. What are you using for bait on your catfish rods? Brim, right now. Uh, brim is what's out there right now. Uh, if I can put about a dozen of these perch in here, I want to be using some of these perch because obviously if the uh, cat or, or if the perch are schooled up in here, chances are the catfish are going to be feeding on them. So uh, that's why I fish for perch, by the way. Some of you may wonder why you're fishing for perch when you're trying to catch big catfish. I use them for bait. That's really the the whole main reason for doing it. Uh, brim is very good in the summertime for some reason, and I'm not sure why. Um, 
they just seem to can them. It's probably because they spawn, the fish pull up out of the shallow water or pull up into shallow water. The catfish can feed on them. They're fairly easy to pin up and catch and, you know, and it's actually easy to catch. So, but yeah, brim's what I got on the catfish rods right now. And if I can get some of these perch, I'll be whacking some of those. Let me spin around here and look at my sonar. Yeah, there's a few. I'm going to show you what this picture looks like on the sonar simply because this is not a lot of them. Oh, there's some on top of the water right next to the boat. This is not a lot. This is what a small group looks like. If you see that right there, that is some perch on the bottom. They're hugging tight right on the bottom. Let me show you what they look like on, I know not everybody has structure scan, but Structure scan will show the individual stuff real clear. Show you real, they see those little fish. And again, I just know from the size of them and stuff that that's perch. Uh, that's just a, an experience thing from fishing and the signature of them. And uh, yeah, see there they are again. So. Get back to here. I always make the joke that um, sorry, I was trying to fish and talk. Let me put this back over here and go back to my rod. Uh, hang on, bear with me. I'm still here. I'm still here. Just swinging around. It would be so much easier if I had a cameraman. I was rich and famous and had a cameraman. Just made a bad mess, folks. Bad mess. I just got into one of my catfish lines. We're gonna see if we can end this without too big a mess. I should be close enough to the camera. I swear this is not a billboard for catfish apparel. Even though it's great stuff. And oh, by the way, just an FYI. You see this catfish gear I got on? Catfish with a K. Uh, a bunch of people ask me if it's mine. It is not mine. This is a uh, apparel company that I partnered with. Uh, and uh, Matt Miles, he's on my Facebook uh, friends list. If you're friends with me on Facebook, he's on there. He owns the company. Uh, it's an apparel company, new company. And uh, as you can tell, it's a lot of catfish oriented stuff. Some good stuff. Uh, I've got one of these performance shirts. It's similar to the stuff that uh, Under Armour and Columbia sells. I own both of those brands. Uh, had some samples. This stuff is pretty amazing. I was kind of wondering, I always tell people, if I like it, I'll tell the world about it. If I don't like it, I'll just keep my mouth shut and I'll never be seen again. This stuff I like. This stuff is very light. It's very comfortable. I'm very impressed with it. Um, but anyway, enough about this shirt. The rest of their stuff's pretty cool. I like their visor. A lot of people don't like visors. I like them, mainly because I got so much hair. Uh, but no, it's a good company. Check them out, catfishclothing.com. Learn a little bit about their story. I'm not gonna go into it here in case I tell it wrong, but it's a pretty good company uh, with a good cause on what they're doing. So go check them out, catfishclothing.com. Read up about the company and what they're doing. I think you'll like it. But yeah, it's not my brand. Uh, I've got some Dieter Melhorn fishing shirts. Uh, giving away a few of those here and there. And I'll be selling them at some point. I just don't have all that stuff in line and in place yet. So I'll get to it eventually. So, Well, right now, it looks like my perch have gone away. I got a few of them. I think I put about a dozen in the boat. Uh, look at that. Beautiful sunrise. God only gives you so many of them. Best place to spend them is fishing. Uh, I'm gonna be fishing out here. I haven't got bit. I've been on the air for wow almost 30 minutes. That's crazy It's my longest one. I've gone live on um, Hopefully you learned something about catching some perch there uh, If you have any questions anything you think of good morning country girl catfish and we had an early lesson We had an early school this morning class started at 655 So you're just waking up so you missed it. You'll have to go play this back. It's pretty Pretty decent on catching perch. It wasn't crazy or through the roof, but we caught some. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, obviously, this will get posted to my page. And if you have any questions that you thought of, uh, put them down in the comment section below. And uh, I'll come back in this afternoon and look over them. And 
address them and answer them. I think questions are the best thing in the world because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I don't think to mention because it's just rattling around in my head. And uh, uh, I just, you know, you take it for granted, everybody knows it. So uh, the whole reason I do these videos is to help educate people and because uh, I think educated fishermen are the best stewards of our resource. So uh, I do everything I can to uh, give people confidence when they go in the water to catch fish. Uh, because I think when you have the confidence to catch them, you've got the confidence to release them and let them go and catch them again. So that's why I do what I do. So uh, hopefully this taught you something. And uh, keep your phone on alert. If the catfishing gets good, I may chime back in here in a little bit. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done so so far. We'll talk to you in a little bit.